Now, armed terrorists suspected to be members of Boko Haram on Sunday invaded Jakana police station in Borno State. That's in Konduga local government area of Borno State, killing a police driver and a woman friend. The terrorists also set to blaze two patrol vehicles belonging to the police and members of the civilian joint tax force and a motorcycle, even as some arms and ammunition were carted away by the rampaging insurgents. Now, Dakana is about 45 kilometers drive from Maiduguri, located along Damaturu Maiduguri Expressway. Now, sources have confirmed to correspondents in Maiduguri that the terrorists stormed the police station at about 1 a.m where they engaged the security agencies for about three hours, overwhelmed them and fled about 3 a.m. But that's actually less than three hours. But back to the details of this story now. You've, we've been hearing about bandits and all, and we know that when we talk about security, we're looking at the police securing the lives and the properties of the people. So if the police are the ones being attacked now, one would think, what is the faith of the people in that area? But still, back to, if you listen to um, Charles's analysis earlier when he was talking about all of the steps that would need to be taken before uh, probably a command is given for security in a particular area, you don't agree, you no, don't no, agree no, to that? Not, you, you don't think that's not, how it not happens? Not at all, because... Uh, we've had uh, instances of security threats and then the DPOs were called upon and then they promptly responded. So it is a high... Uh, who called the DPO? Who called the DPO? Who? Who called it? Who? Who gave the order to the DPO? Can you answer that, please? No, no, no. So I, I, I... You said... But who did you call it? I, I have instance of insecurity as a person. And I called the DPO of my division, and the DPO responded. I have had instances of insecurity in another locality, and the DPO equally responded. So I'm not saying by assumption. <laughs> I'm saying what I know. Now, on the issue of uh, uh, it is when matters are highly political, at that level that the governor is talking about, that looks as if... Uh, maybe the IGP has to step in. But on local matters, it is not all matters that the IGP must step in, no. We are even in an era where most cases, even when it starts at the local station, if you go and jump to the Commissioner of Police or IGP, IGP may refer back the matter to that division where the matter is or that particular unit of the police. So I have these instances. So I think that the the chain of command it no, depends uh, when I, it, it depends I, I, on the I, I, scenario. I, 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 now on okay, the, uh, Charles, just I, hold on, I, just yes. just a minute, Charles, please. You now, come in shortly. Now on the issue of uh, okay. the Meduguri crisis, you know, there is a conventional weapon approved by uh, UN and equally our uh, laws that the police can carry, the armies can carry or use. There is no way our police, our Nigerian police, if the video we are seeing is the kind of weapon that the uh, Boko Haram, you know, came with, there is no way they will not overpower the Nigerian police. So I think that with the rate and the level of insecurity that we are having, I have traveled to some other countries. The kind of weapon that the police, their state security uses, is not the kind of uh, weapon our own police is using. They are using sophisticated weapon that will be able to meet the current global insecurity in the world. You know, so the insecurity in other countries is the same, similarly with Nigeria. The kind of... Uh, uh, in quote, militia group, the kind of weapons that they are using, like that of the Boko Haram, is almost everywhere in the world. So right. for us to rely on the kind of weapon that our Nigerian police are using may not really help our security response in times of this. All right, thank you very much. Now let's hear you, Charles. Okay, what I want to say, right? 
Uh, in relation to a crime happening in this uh, locality, they were going to call the DPO. That's on the, that's on the pedestrian level. But what we're dealing with is insurgency, we're dealing with ambush. And I insist that the state governor's hands are tied. I'll give you an example. Uh, after the key, live in Lagos, I live in Lagos. During the end of uh, 2020, October 2020, that time, remember? Mm. Now, was the government of Lagos able to deploy even uh, security agents? The answer is no. Nope. Where did they from? All they needed to do was to call the deploy in, uh, in, I think it's the division, uh, uh, what they call the Kenya Cantonment. To bring uh, men of me, uh, so they are smart, not even the police men. The, the order was given from Abuja, not even from Malta. Meanwhile, that is what the what happened in Lagos was in Lagos State. The hands of God not I'm not saying, I'm not saying when somebody sees the office, two people are fighting, or you you saw somebody uh, maybe uh, take uh, the uh, car. Yes, those cases you can report to the police or because they can that one doesn't require to go to Abuja, but what about insurgents? That is a crime against the state. You are talking about banditry. That is crime against the state. That's what I'm saying that when you have crime against the state, in most cases, it will happen within a, a locality. Do you have a recourse to go to higher authorities for you to get uh, that matter uh, settled? I'm not saying the one that Rikiye uh, uh, had to talk to his DPO. No, no, no. These are this, this one can be locally. Now, coming to the issue of the Jakana, uh, this uh, and the most so that there are people who are feeding far from insurgency in Nigeria. And don't also forget that insurgency in Nigeria is an ideology that has to do about state capture. But people want to, they, they, they say when they die, when they die, they are happy. They know they, are, they have their shot to go to help Jana as a community in Islam. These are the people you are, you are, you are, you are fighting against. These people say they want a they state. Where you have a mistake in the cap of Nigeria. If not, they, if people they can go around the Nigeria, they tried that. They, they went into the bushes, they went to the press, the name of a uh, headman and all that, the treated headman. You saw the things, the rivers suffered it, and then uh, suffered it. All, all of them will suffer the way in the forest. These are the same people who are there, who are in government, who are even co sponsoring these things. There are people who are in, in, I mean, I don't know whether they have. So the people who are working with these people in tandem with them is a state actor. They want their jobs to be trusted. I mean, on us as, as a country, they want a state cap out that is called Islamic. Where they have uh, have uh, uh, all the Islamic, Islamic laws and all of them. They don't want everything that has to do with the Western education. These are the people that went in to wrap the police over there. But the police in Nigeria, they are ill-equipped. Equipped so they can't, the, the ambition they have, the ambition they have, are like that, they are, they are like light fire, which of course cannot, you know, stand against what these people, uh, they, they are waiting. So, as I said, we can't get out of this problem as the government is able to identify those who did this, that are in them, within the system that everything, within the system that also are in tandem with them, are supporting them as they are fighting this, uh, this uh, uh, first, first, uh, first set of war, and they are also fighting this ideological war that they want a shall go system in the state from, of Nigeria. From your analysis, you have alleged that the insecurity, or most of the cases of insecurity that we have in Nigeria, is uh, based on religion. It is it's religion, yeah, of course. I mean, Boko Haram is said, uh, what is Boko Haram? Haram is, is forbidden. It, so, education, Boko they don't want West education. And they said they want Sharia legal system, not the, 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 the concern we have with the concern we have in Nigeria. They said they want a state for them for themselves. And they be fight war. Uh, they, they fight the insurgency in Nigeria. Have they, have they let down their gas? No. That good the uh, former president said, he said, you have Boko Haram in the system. All right. I'm to repeat it. Shas. Uh, Sorry to cut it's you now. In the system. Sorry to cut you now, but I want us to talk about what can be done.
all right, in the few minutes that we have before we go on a break, what can be done concerning the cases of insecurity? We'll hear from Chas and then we'll come to you, um, Ambassador. What do you think we can do right now? Because it has gotten to a point where even farmers are scared of going to their farms, and this is affecting the food prices in Nigeria, affecting a whole lot of things. And one of the reasons we, are, we have um, people who want to go on a protest. So what's the way forward? Well, part of what's done, the way forward is to fight insecurity frontally. And how do you fight insecurity frontally? Is that you must, must not only mouth, but we seem to be doing it. So have infiltrate the rank of people. You know, even in those days, you, when you had CIDs, you could say the criminal investigation department. If a certain, a certain, a certain police officer can be in investor attack of police, Seven years, never get it. But that man is working. He is working for the authorities, but he is he pretend to be a student. So there's a way that government can to infiltrate their ranks to be able to get uh, good intel, intelligent report of the authorities, the way they evaluate it, analyze it, for them to be able to present their planning. It happens all over the world, even in uh, in Russia, even in uh, in uh, Israel, even in the US, in the UK, they have. People that work, this is from apart from informal, the youth man, you also use to not get the system to infiltrate them. So you must fight it, you must fight to in front of them. This one campaign is going to be paid leave service to it. So until you do that, you'll not be able to win the war. If you don't win the war, it's going to be pester and then we will have uh, the two such people uh, uh, being afraid to go to the protest or uh, bullshit or even their plans. And if the continuous the full security may never stop. Uh, it, 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 it. All right, thank you very much, Chassie Deho. Let's get here from you, Ambassador Ike. Insecurity is not only perpetrated by Boko Haram, by so many other groups. We have so many and several groups that perpetrate insecurity, starting from our localities. You have the court groups, you have the militia group, you have the agitators, and you have the, uh, uh, the bandits and so forth and so on. So the, the, the issue here is what are the causes of all these things? If we must stop and prevent all of these things, one, our leaders must eschew, they must stop greed, being greedy. Even from our community level, our local government level, our state level, and our federal level, we must stop and reduce the level of our greed. Because part of most of these agitations and the reactions as, as a result of feeling oppressed. So until we stop greed, being fair to one another, stop injustice, ensure that what is good and due for this next brother or sister should be given. These are ways and factors that will enable us prevent all of this insecurity in our communities, in our state, in our country. So I do not believe that the issue of uh, uh, insecurity and is the curb of it is purely government responsibility. We have private and civil servants, uh, sorry, not civil servants, rather civilians, who are causes of insecurity in their families, in their community, in their local government, in their states, and then in Nigeria. So Nigeria is not just a federated unit. We have our communities where most of these crises and crimes are being perpetrated. So if you are a leader, if you are a community chief, if you are a local government chairman, a youth leader, woman leader, whatever, assembly member, senator, governor, ensure that you reduce greed. Because you cannot be enjoying the commonwealth of the people and you watch the people look at you and you know, live like slaves. It doesn't concern you, it doesn't matter to you. They give you contract to do the road network that the common man will enjoy, you will siphon that money. You will not do that job. They give you money to want to, uh, you know, electrify your community, you will siphon that money. So when you see the young people begin to react based on the challenges and based on the oppressive, you know, nature of our leaders. Then you begin to complain, yeah, insecurity, insecurity, insecurity. Yes, he said some people are feeding fat from the insecurity. For instance, if a governor takes five billion naira 
3 billion naira for security vote. Security vote is un un accounted for. So these are huge money that should have gone into development. Of course, some people feel when there is insecurity anyway. But I'm appealing to all of us as leaders that let us try and reduce the level of greed. Because these are the symptoms of these reactions. Nobody wants to be a rebel. Nobody wants to become an agitator. It is when I'm feeling oppressed, I will begin to agitate. That, that's when I begin to uh, operate. You call me militia, you call me militant, you call me courtist, you call me, uh, what again, bandit or Boko Haram. Right. So let us try and do what is fair. Thank you so much, Ambassador Ike, for that. We'll take some time off now. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, the conversation continues. We have other stories on our tables, interesting stories. Please stay with us. <laughs>